Way to go, Albert. This is a story, oh, it's Miss Caroline here, and this is a story about telling the time. Or well, actually, it's about what happens if you can't tell the time. So here's Albert in bed, and he's just waking up. Good morning, everyone, it's seven o'clock, said the radio announcer in a cheery voice. Albert, the absent-minded alligator, opened his eyes and reached over to turn the radio off. Oh, that was a good sleep, he said with a big yawn, but I guess it's time to get up. Albert rolled out of bed, he put on his bathrobe and went to brush his teeth. Then he went to the kitchen to have breakfast. When Albert sat down to eat, he looked at the notes on his bulletin board. Let's see, he said. I have to bring my old newspapers, bottles and cans to Rob Rupert's house at nine o'clock so we can take them to the recycling plant. I guess there's no need to rush, Albert said to himself. I still have plenty of time. The ma mail hasn't been delivered yet and it usually comes around eight o'clock. So Albert didn't hurry. He had another piece of toast and read a magazine. He washed the breakfast dishes. Then he got dressed and made his bed. When Albert was done with his chores, he thought, the mail must be here by now. I'm sure it's past eight o'clock. So Albert went out to get the mail. But when he opened the mailbox, it was empty. Hmm, I guess there's no mail for me today, Albert said, scratching his head. Well, I'd better be going. I don't want to keep my friends waiting. Albert put his bundles of paper, bottles and cans into his wagon and went off to Rupert the resourceful rhinoceros's house. Meanwhile, the Alpha Pets were busy loading Rupert's van and wondering where Albert was. Ollie, the obedient ostrich, pulled out his pocket watch. It's nine o'clock. Albert is late again, he said. Why can't he ever be on time? He's some nerve keeping us waiting, said Delilah, the demanding duck. I'm really surprised, said Katie the kind koala. I know Albert wanted to help us. Soon everything was packed in the van. Rupert looked at his wristwatch. It's ten o'clock, he said. We can't wait for Albert any longer. We'd better go before the recycling station closes. That's the truth, agreed Tina the truthful tiger. We have a lot to do today. Well, let's leave a note for Albert telling him to meet us for lunch at 12 o'clock noon, Katie said. Good idea, everybody agreed. So the alphabets, pets, made a note for Albert. Then they jumped in the van and drove off. And there's the note. Just as the van drove out of sight, Albert arrived at Rupert's house. He looked around, wondering where his friends were. Then he saw the note. Dear Albert, it's almost 10 o'clock. We couldn't wait any longer. Meet us at the Magic Marble for lunch at 12 o'clock noon. Then we'll go to the movies, Katie. Oh, oh, Albert said. I didn't know it was so late. I'd better be on time for lunch. So Albert went back home. I guess I'll read my book till it's time to go to lunch, he said. I know it's time to leave when I hear the church bells ring just before noon. Albert settled down in a big chair and opened his book, but before he knew it, he was fast asleep. Ring! Albert jumped up and answered the telephone. It was Delilah. Albert, why are you still home? she cried. You were supposed to meet us for, tw uh, for lunch at twelve noon. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, Albert stammered. I, but Delilah interrupted. Sorry, Schmorry, she said. You're just plain absent-minded. But, but, Albert said. No buts about it, Delilah shouted. We're going to the movies soon. The show starts at two o'clock. Be there. And Delilah hung up. The Alpha Pets finished their lunch and walked to the theatre. When they got there, Ollie looked at the clock. It's almost two o'clock. I hope Albert gets here soon, he said. But Albert wasn't there at two o'clock. He was late again. By the time he showed up, all the alphabets were angry. It's not fair to keep us waiting. 
Polly said to Albert. Now we can't see the movie, Delilah complained. First you were late, too late to help us load Rupert's van, then you were too late for lunch, and now you made us miss the movie, Tina said. Tears started to roll down Albert's cheeks. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be late, he said. And it's not because I'm forgetful. It's, it's because, because, is it because you don't have a watch? Katie asked. Well, that's part of it, Albert started. But I, uh, I don't have a watch, but because, because, because why? Tina asked. Albert took a deep breath and whispered, because I don't know how to tell the time. The alphabets could hardly believe their ears. Now they were no longer angry. They felt sorry for Albert. I have an idea, said Rupert. Since we're too late for the movies, let's go to the museum. There's a special exhibit of clocks. We can teach Albert how to tell the time there. Everyone agreed that Rupert's idea was a good one, so they went off to the museum. At the museum, the Alpha Pets were amazed to see so many different kinds of clocks. There were grandfather clocks, cuckoo clocks, sundials, hourglasses, computer clocks, electric clocks, mechanical clocks, water clocks, alarm clocks, and even music box clocks. You see, Tina said to Albert, all these clocks look different, but they all measure time in some way. But how can you tell what the time is? Albert asked. Katie pointed to a big clock on the wall. See those two pointers? They're called hands. They tell the hours and minutes. When the long hand points up to the number 12 and the short hand points exactly to another number, the, no the number tells what hour it is. Can you tell what hour it is on the cuckoo clock? Tina asked. The short hand pointed exactly to three. I guess it must be three o'clock, Albert said. Way to go, the alphabet cheered. Albert looked at another clock. The shorter hand pointed exactly to the five. It must be... Albert started. Go on, Tina encouraged. It must be five o'clock, Albert said. Way to go, Albert. They all applauded. Now Albert was getting excited. He ran from one clock to the next, telling the time. That's four o'clock. That's seven o'clock. That's one o'clock. Suddenly, Albert stopped in his tracks. Oh no, he shouted. This clock must be broken. The short hand is stuck between the four and the five. Ollie put his, hand, his arms around Albert's shoulder and explained. When the short hand points past a number, it means it's past the hour. The short hand on this clock tells us it's past four o'clock, but not yet five o'clock. So how can we tell what time it is? Um, Albert asked, scratching his head. That's why there's a longer minute hand, said Rupert with a grin. It counts the minutes. There are 60 minutes in an hour. Rupert pointed to the clock and said, the minute hand points straight up when the short hand points exactly to the hour. Then it moves around the face of the clock one minute at a time in 30 minutes, it goes halfway round the face of the clock. Then the longer minute hand points straight down. We know it's half past the hour. Albert thought for a while. Then he said with a smile, I guess that means this clock says half past four o'clock. Way to go, Albert, Ollie said. You can also say it's 4.30. That means it's 30 minutes past four o'clock. Albert read the time on many more clocks. That's half past nine or 9.30. That's half past two or 2.30. And that's half past 10 o'clock or 10.30. Way to go, Albert, everybody cheered. Now I know, Albert said, 
and as soon as I get get a watch I'll be on time just like everyone else you'll see I never be late again as they were getting ready to go Katie noticed that there were beautiful, beautiful clocks and watches on sale in the gift shop she whispered something into Rupert's ear Rupert smiled and whispered into Tina's ear Tina nodded and whispered into Ollie's ear and Ollie whispered into Delilah's ear then Katie ran into the shop to buy a special present. Albert was too so busy noticing the clocks that he didn't even notice. He was so busy looking at the clocks, he didn't even notice what his friends were doing. As the alphabets left the museum, the sun was setting. I guess we'd better get home before it gets too dark, Albert said. Yes, Katie agreed. It's been a busy day, but we still have one more thing to do. We do, Albert asked. I hope I'll be on time. You are on time, Tina shouted, just in time for a special surprise. Then with a big grin, Katie handed Albert the package she had bought. Everybody watched as Albert unwrapped the box and opened it. It's a watch, Albert shouted as tears of happiness filled his eyes. Ollie adjusted the time on the watch and then Katie helped buckle the watch band to Albert's wrist. Can you tell what time it is now, Albert? Tina asked. Albert stared at his watch for a few minutes. Then he smiled and said, yes, I know what time it is. It's five o'clock. But more important, it's time to say thank you to my wonderful Alpha Pet friends. Way to go, Albert, everybody shouted. And that's the end of the story. So, if you've been watching this video, then you can ask your adult to make a note in your learning log logs. And soon you'll be bronze, silver, gold, or even platinum readers. And that will be fantastic. So way to go, Albert. And I hope you enjoyed that story. Bye bye.